Welcome for the afternoon. It's the second time that I've been here. Last year I talked about um, energy efficiency with LED print bars. Complete different story today. So um, I'm kind of a jack of all trades, so I try to make it as precise as possible. <laughs> Let's see. Um, just a few words about EFI. I assume the majority of you have touched EFI in one or another way. So EFI has three business units, inkjet, industrial and production inkjets, MIS, ERP software, so workflow, and Fiery, which is the base of EFI from the beginning on, RIPs, controllers, digital front ends. For us, networking and working together is key. This is why I'm here. This is why all of you are here because we want to share ideas, talk about topics, and that's why we try to get along with everyone to talk and exchange ideas. But let's go. So from a traditional manufacturer's point of RIP software and workflow software, two years ago, two and a half years ago, EFI acquired Preta Print, a Spanish manufacturer of tile printing machines, industrial tile printing machines. So we had to learn a lot workflow-wise because a ceramic workflow is completely different than what we knew before from other inkjet workflows. Might it be production, textile, proofing as one of the basis of the company originally, color management-wise because <clears throat> Such a Creta print machine uses up to eight inks, but it can be eight browns, or two browns, a green, a yellow, no CMYK process at all. And design-wise, in the graphics industry, we are quite used to get a PDFX. If I don't get a PDFX, I just reject the job. <laughs> in ceramic printing, it's a designer that creates an RGB file. That's all you get sometimes even untacked. So the whole ripping and color management process is so much different. So this is just an image of this Creta printer. It's within the tile production facility. It's dirty, it's humid, it's loud, um, and sealed within is the printing machine. So it's printing on the raw tile and later on the tile is glazed. It's not a print on a glazed tile, it's a print below the glaze. So it's true industrial, 50 meters per minute, up to 1 meter 80 width. Might not only be flat, could also be shaped, three-dimensional. <coughs> so what we did was taking the expertise that we had with Fiery XF as a known production and proofing rip and adopt it to the Creta print workflow. One problem in this case is a proof of prints a square meter in five, six minutes maximum. A production printer might be printing 30 square meters an hour, but here we're talking about 50 meters a minute. So it needs to be a much more beefier rip. That's why we took a fiery controller. So a controller that basically drives a digital printing machine like a Konica Minolta, a Canon, a Xerox, a Rico, you name it, adopting it to an inkjet process. So what we have here is basically the workflow that runs. It's importing a file, might be RGB, can be CMYK, getting it to fiery color-wise, a specific new color management designed especially for this tile process. Retouching and proofing, because it lasts days today to get a kiln for a tile. But we've created a specific paper, a specific setup that can be used to rip and proof tiles prior to production. <coughs> Speeding up the whole process from days down to minutes. And then getting printed rip files ready and down to the creator print machine. So today, the designers work with an RGB workflow. The RIP itself returns them what we call a virtual RGB file so that the designer is not leaving his comfort zone. 
He has not to deal with CMYK profiles, multi-channel profiles, device links, all buzzwords that make a designer scared. He wants to be creative and he doesn't want to learn about printing technology. Get my stuff printed. <clears throat> so we can visualize the production finally in Photoshop without leaving his comfort zone. <clears throat> and afterwards we could do a really precise reproduction of the tiles based on the knowledge that EFI acquired 2004 with buying the best company as a proof rib manufacturer. More than 70,000 proofing ribs are out there worldwide and taking this knowledge into this. But we need to learn a few things because we have to learn about glaze. Quite different. Of course, we cannot simulate haptics with a paper print, but we can simulate the glaze pretty much. How matte, how gloss. We've designed a specific paper for this workflow. And for the proofing, it's independent of the machine. So today, they take the kiln down to the production into this dirty area. Here, the proofer can be one level above. And if the proof printer has a built-in measurement device, we can even connect diff one, two, three facilities, just ex exchanging measurement numbers to make sure that everything is aligned. For the machine itself, um, we have a pretty much easy to use profiling interface. The manufacturer, the tile manufacturer itself doesn't have to work how to create the profiles. He just uploads measurements and gets a profile ready back into his setup. Dedicated with um, um, algorithms for the ceramic tile industry and with a much higher precision than ICC offers today because ICC profiles cannot deal with glaze, with in non-uniform areas. Plus, everybody wants to save ink, especially in the ceramic tile industry. I want to have the cheapest ink and I want to have the lowest ink consumption. So, what we have here is basically getting the same out, but with 25% less ink coverage. In addition, when we look at the print bars, and you can see the um, physical samples out there, they change inks from one day to the other, but then have to reproduce a job that they did last week with a different ink. No one wants to clean the machine, purging all the ink and refilling it with another ink. Um, plus, ceramic ink deviations from one shipment to the other are enormous. It's not like in production areas with UV ink. So what we did is kind of a repurposing ability. So printing the same visual appearance, even if you have different ink sets. as long as the gamut shape is close enough. So we can't simulate um, a green, a light green, if it's not there in the final ink set. Another thing in industrial printing is small web label presses, like here with the EFI Jetrion. It's a 44 meter per minute printer, CMYK plus white, with laser-based inline cutting. So no need for um, die cuts. Inline varnish, and this is for short and mid-run production. However, well, this is kind of a machine. It's not fully equipped. There is no white, and there is no varnishing in it. So fully equipped, it's even wider. Here again, we had to adopt the rib to this product because all we knew from a, <clears throat> from a standard rib is, yeah, it's based on an Adobe Print PDF engine, it supports more than 600 printers, but it's not dedicated for the label industry. 
we had precise spot color reproduction even in labels it's so important to get your spot colors reproduced so when looking at the rip it's pretty easy there is a workflow area where you connect your printers to your workflows and you get your job area and especially here when we have operators the operator should deal with the machine, but he should not touch things like color management, uh, workflow setups. So the interface of the RIP is fully configurable. I can give them full access. I can give them access only to proofing. I can give them access only to production areas, but I can also set my own workflow. <coughs> Tailor-made to the operator. If this is just an operator that should press the button, fill, the substrate and not more. I can just tailor make the rip just to do this. So 48 minutes per minute, automated cut contour extraction because there is a the laser cutter built in. So every job needs to have a cut contour. What happens with their nose if there's no cut contour? So we have to include tools to get a cut contour. And jobs can be then reprinted without re-ripping because we separated the rip process from the print station. The print station gets pre-ripped files and just prints them and can reprint them, no need. It's not a line printer. So it's one operator for the whole system. But now we've got talked about ceramics and industries, and label. What's all that if it doesn't is integrated into your workflow. And this is where EFI's second business unit, EPS, EFI productivity software kicks in. Everything is available from web to print, job acquisition, scheduling, product planning, ripping, color management, warehouse and factoring. Tailor made for different industries. So we've got web to print, Acquire, business management, production integration with Fireys. Doesn't matter whether this is an inkjet Fiery or toner based Fiery or a Lambda Fiery next year. Doesn't matter. And fully connected to the industrial printing. All by JDF. So it's a bi directional JDF integration. Everybody knows JDF is a standard, it's not a standard. So in this case, all EFI products talk the same JDF language. In most cases, JDF ends at the RIP. You can connect to the, to the RIP via JDF, but you won't get machine info. Here, JDF connects down to the printing machine. So in a perfect world, I know everything about job fundamentals at every stage, no matter where I am. So in principle, even a web to print interface can tell me if the printer is busy, if the printer is in maintenance, whatever. It's just a question about the implementation. And as everything is modular, it depends on the implementation at the customer side is to decide which features should be implemented and what should be used. So the whole productivity suite does everything from cross-media, marketing, down to pre-press integration if necessary. You can pick and choose. It's a little bit like cherry picking. Oh, I don't want a web to print. I have a second source web to print solution. It's not a problem. It does everything that needs to be done in a job for estimating, order management, reporting, analysis, purchasing, receivables, you name it. So with this tightest integration, we reduce touch points, mistakes, errors. Try and error is what it costs the most. Job fundamentals are available everywhere within the company, but also via a web to print interface for clients. A job submission can be done virtually from everywhere, including job fundamentals. What I said about the industry-proven RIP technology, 
since the 90s, Fiery is a brand in this case. And with this high, highest flexibility, it's no matter of the print size. So it doesn't matter whether this is a small web label. This is a five meter roll to roll printer, a ceramic printer, or two months ago we acquired Reggiani, a textile printer. Doesn't matter. So fast and swift because you're getting three, two, two additional presentations for the coffee break. So. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Rama. Are there any uh, questions? Thank you. Uh, I have one question uh, for your ITP workflow. How you manage that all the designers uh, using the right uh, profile when they uh, uh, manage their documents? Is that RGB, uh, Adobe 1989, or what you're using for that? It is based on Adobe RGB. Um, it's a specific workflow setup that everyone has to use. Um, so there are some design fundamentals and some specifications that are delivered to the designers. And with the machines and with the designers, they all get a calibrated monitor, so making sure that they all work on the same base, basically. So without kind of specifications and design rules, it will not work, for sure. And the RIP can do soft proofing in any case because the RIP treats a soft proofing display like a printer. So RIP data will be displayed on the screen. It looks to me uh, that you have a nice workflow and everything's working fine. Is it possible to have a central station and maybe the central station is in Germany and you have some printers in Spain, Brazil, uh, wherever, and you're able to print directly from Germany. You see, okay, in a moment, this printer is ready for print. And I have some space there and I can put some files here and I see another printer located in Turkey is uh, able to print it tomorrow. So you have a um, backup or you make a big run on two separate machines. That's the nice thing with um, separating the RIP station and the print station. As it's not a line driver, as long as there's a network interface, you can fill the queue of the print station no matter where the printer is. Doesn't matter whether, like in textile, the printer is in Asia and the design is in Germany. Um, and load balancing, of course, is part of the MIS integrations. If there are different machines, similar machines, <coughs> load balancing is not an issue. Perhaps I have a question for you, yeah. Ranar. If you look at the uh, inkjet for manufacturing process, that's the theme of this conference, of course. You look at the integration of, let's say, uh, digital inkjet uh, devices, just like you show that uh, ceramics and label printing. How in, in the manufacturer's side, okay, that means that inkjet is right at the filling or manufacturing line. How is that integrated in the total ERP MIS system? Because they want to get the feedback from those systems. They want actually to get the cost elements out of there, how much ink is consumed, how many meters of labels I have produced, how many tiles were broken in the process, and so on. Is that monitored into this total yes. approach? It, as it, the JDF integration gets down to the printing machine itself, the printing machine reports every printed meter, every consumed drop of ink, um, every um, downtime, uptime, maintenance time, so it's, everything is within the scheduling and the reporting. What looks like a big slide, I call it always the big slide with the MIS systems, behind it are different MIS systems, like Radius for the packaging industry. CTT just acquired yesterday for the corrugated market. Um, Lector, which is a very small one for smaller digital printing um, company. So it, it depends. It's tailor-made and it can be tailor-made. But the reporting is always the same. Via JDF from the machine back to the interfaces, no matter whether this is a web interface or um, the central in, um, installation. Okay. Any other questions? One for um, this JDF um, <coughs> reporting, is that a real-time reporting or is that yes. a, it's a real-time reporting, it's so it's a constant feedback. It's constantly bidirectional. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you very much for your presentation. I'm out.